Flimmin autofocus. Get off. Okay. Let's see brightness. Too bright. <laughs> hey cues. Don't mind me, I'm just breaking everything here. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Hey, from the ashes. Yeah, it's a little bright, isn't it? Whoops. Now, this isn't going to be a very interesting stream. I'm actually I'm doing this because I need to... Man, I can't seem to compensate for that. Oh, well. Hey, Paulie. It's just going to have to be a little bit overexposed there. That's all right. Um, yeah, basically what you can see is over here we have the multimeter. We'll just stick that there. I almost tried and grabbing the multimeter on my OBS to drag it across then. That would have been a little bit comical. Let's try and put this up here. Let's see if I can get a... No, oh, well, that's right. Um, hey, Vladimir. So, as you know, with my meter, I um, wrote some software that allows me to dump the contents of the screen to a text file, and then Open Broadcaster reads that text file. Uh, and what I didn't realize is that Open Broadcaster is limited to about once per second for the update. So if you have a faster rate on your multimeter, which funnily enough, not many do, uh, at least not many consumer ones, it will miss those updates because it's only doing it once every second. And I only found this out because I wrote some more software for Lewis so that he could try this technique with his uh, BK Precision 390. And he wrote back to me and said, yeah, it's really, it's got awful slow, uh, the updates. I mean, the software works, but the updates are really slow. And then throw on the open broadcaster slow update, it just becomes intolerable. So I wanted to go and find out why that was. And I saw about six hours ago, I started working on open broadcaster and I've managed to now make it that I can uh, change the refresh rate of the files being loaded. I'm just going to stick this under here for this. Come here. There we go. <laughs> um, <coughs> pardon me. So I can now create a text. I don't know if I can actually do this. So you'll have to bear with me. I'm not used to doing open broadcaster windows within windows. I'm not even sure if you can do that. Mm -hmm. Nope, that's myself. No, nope. and I probably just killed everything. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna try doing it itself. Ah, uh, joy. Anyway, hopefully this works. Does it show up. Not really. I don't know if you guys are going to see this or not, but um, normally with the... Actually, you should be able to see it, shouldn't you? No. Okay, normally you'd have this normal read from file. Tell me if you can't see this, by the way and whatever. What you didn't have before is this reload file at set intervals. So now I can set it to 250 milliseconds or if I want to slow it right down, 5000. Let's try that. That's not working. <laughs> Crap. That really looks like that's still only running out Uh, 
That's great. It doesn't seem to be working properly. <laughs> Why is that happening? Has hey, zero effect. I'm not sure. It shouldn't be that fast. Because I set that to read it fast. Uh, so. Okay. No, it's something's different here. I've botched up the code somewhere. I'll try 100. Oh, well, there you go. At 100 milliseconds, you see it's pretty much keeping up. Whereas before, it was like every second. And I mean, it's... Maybe you should disable screen transitions. I don't know. It's probably not going to make much difference. Anyway, let's see how quick this can read. Yeah, it was overload, that's why. That happens almost as quick as it updates in OBS. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yep. All right. So anyway, the only thing I found is that Windows and uh, Linux use different text inputs. Um, so I had to duplicate my code. But now I've got to go and find out why it's... Um, it, when I set it to 5,000 milliseconds, it should take five seconds to uh, update, but it seems to be a little bit quicker than that. Whoops. Oh, well. Hey, Greg. Uh, let's see. Anything that works for the iPhones for board view? Uh, I've still got to write software for that so that people can just do it from the web. The plan is that I will get a high resolution scan of the blank PCBs. I've already got the PCBs. And then I will overlay it with a known, or maybe not even known, uh, component placement. And then from there, we'll have to make it so that people can come along and say, click on it and say, this is R3716. It's this value and the network name on this side is this. And so as an individual, it would be a very painful process to say the least. But if we can get a few hundred people contributing, then yeah, just everybody adding that a little bit, maybe as people encounter it themselves. It uh, shouldn't take too long to at least get a usable set of data on the phones. Is that Bluetooth? Yes, it's Bluetooth, yeah. There's no no cable on this one. It's just... Yeah. I'm pretty happy with it. The Bluetooth's a little bit unstable sometimes, but it's not too bad. I can't do this under Windows yet because until... The very latest Windows 10 update, the uh, creators update or whatever it was, Windows did not have a proper Bluetooth low power edition API in it. You had to go about some other crazy way. And so essentially no one's really bothered then with Bluetooth low power on Windows because it's just like, well, stuff that. Overall, Bluetooth itself is very, it's a frustrating protocol to deal with from a programmer's perspective. Uh, if you just want to do something like, I just want to read serial data from this Bluetooth device, it's quite a nightmare. Hey, Marwe, been a while since I've seen you, Marwe. Hope you've been all right. Hope you haven't been laid up in bed or anything like that, sick. So I'm pretty happy with the update speed now of the open broadcaster, though I'm a little concerned about how the, why it's not... Um, why it's not really honoring my chosen speed. I'll try 900. It seems, yeah, so that's about 900 milliseconds now. So that's sort of like where it was before. So you can see that it would lag quite considerably. And then if I crank it back, to about 250, 100 actually seems pretty good, but it's a little, yeah, so you take it to 100, and it's super fast, so I'm really happy with that. <sighs> hey, Vladimir, wait, didn't I say hello before? I'm sure I did, yep. Um, 
So yeah, hopefully, if um, Lewis stumbles across this, he might actually go, oh, look, it's a potential it might work. And But the only trouble is I've got to now wait for the open broadcaster people to accept my pull request on the Git system. And then once the pull request is done, then they will build the binary release. And then at that point, people will be able to download it and use it in the Windows. The big problem is I don't have a Windows build system here set up to be able to build the code myself. So I've been doing it blind. Uh, it's compiling and it replicates what I cut and paste across between Linux and Windows seems to be the same. But there's no guarantee it's going to work. Is it going to open source software, open board view software for iPhone? Um, yeah, Qs. It's it's all going to be um, it's all going to be open source. I mean, I don't really intend to make really any money out of this. I probably should. People probably beat me over the head for not doing that, but um, it's just it's how I roll. Yeah, when I do these sort of things, I do it because it makes my life easier and because other people have done the same. Like the people who wrote Open Board, uh, Open Broadcaster, so you know, and just giving run on back to the community. It's not really altruistic, I suppose, because ultimately you're just hoping that other people will do the same for you. So you're really kind of trying to give to yourself indirectly. Um, I don't really believe in altruism. I'm fairly certain we all ultimately have a motive um, to do these things, even if it seems like a good motive. It's still a motive. And I am working on some open broadcaster update. Um, this is the trouble with having open board view and open broadcaster. They both get my mind mixed up. I do have some improvements on open board view coming. Uh, I know about six months ago I sort of walked away from the project because I was pretty much done with it. And I wanted other people to come in and try their hand at it. Uh, it's been unfortunately a bit stagnated. And I don't really want to see it rust on the perch and get knocked off. So I'm now going to go in and add a few more things that I think we could do with. Uh, just some tweaks to start with. Uh, some little user interface features that I find myself wanting. Such as if you're doing a search for a part or something and it comes up with the suggestion list. A lot of the time I subconsciously move my mouse over to one of those suggestions to double click to activate and say go ahead and show me this part. And at the moment um, Open Board View doesn't do that. So I'm working on that and a few other little tweaks. So once now that I've done the Open Broadcaster update that I wanted, I can go back to the Open Board View. So, um, is it possible to implement diode measurements that can be shared and stored in different points and selected? Zero, yes. That is one of the things I'm planning on doing. It already exists in a way as the annotations system, but the, the limitation is that the annotations are not um, portable unless you copy the SQLite file that's associated with the board view file. What I hope to do is actually set up a central repository that everybody will be able to draw from, kind of like ZXW, except it will be open. Uh, as I say, but yeah, I mean, technically the ability to do it is already there, but a case of trying to make it more user accessible is what I need to work on. Let's uh, see. I'm really happy at how fast this is going. I'm watching it there and it's there's barely a tenth of a second delay between those. So you have your board view compiled for Linux. Oh, ZX. Um, you have your board view compiled for... Sorry, I'm not sure what you mean by that, ZX. Um, obviously, like I am working on my board view open board view program and yeah obviously I'll build it for each time but I think you already you'd already know that so I'm suspecting I'm misinterpreting what you're asking probably so I have had quite a few interesting projects lately but uh, it's just been a bit pressed for time and every time I 
stop the camera. Normally during the day I am running this camera almost constantly so that I can capture everything I'm doing for the sake of customer liability issues. But it seems like every time I decide to turn off the camera is when the fun things happen. Oh, you don't use... Yeah. Um, okay, the trick with Open Board View is that thanks to the really impressive work by Pernov, we are able to compile the Windows binary using Linux. So we no longer need Windows to make the Windows version, which I just love. It's brilliant that I don't have to do that. Uh, it's not that Windows can't do it. It's just that in terms of scripting it to make it happen automatically and things like that is just a little bit trickier and it's just a pain in the butt to have to switch, you know, cross compile, uh, compile on two separate systems when you can just do it on the one and you end up the same result. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. But unfortunately I can't do that with uh, Open Broadcaster because I don't know how. <laughs> um, Pernov set it up for Open Board View, and I suspect though that the extensive libraries required to do Open Broadcaster will not work in the same way as what uh, we're doing the cross compile on Open Board View. And I just need to get a Windows machine set up with Visual Studio 2017 or whatever, and you know go through the pain. Um. Zero with my, do you get along with your in-laws? Um, yes, I do. There's no, there's no um, problems there or anything. It's just a case of when you get to sort of the point where you're trying to live your own life, no matter who you're around, you know, if there's a... Uh, space encroachments or anything like that you're naturally going to start flaring up or you know there's going to be some friction so what i need to do is essentially come up with about you know a quick two hundred thousand dollars and buy my own house that would be much easier what is wrong with the iphone you have on the desktop uh, let's see this one here now i've taken it away i honestly do not know it's not the pmic one i don't think have a look. I've got a couple of MacBooks coming in next week, and I've got some uh, PCs I've got to fix as well. So, oh, the other thing is it's a bit of a wobble, but uh, I've moved my Open Broadcaster switcher to up here, and so I can just press the button rather than stuffing around on my desk here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this one. It's not the one that I tore the PMIC off. It's not the one. Yeah, this could just be a case of a locked phone that uh, I just haven't exploited for parts yet. Yeah, it's probably that. What I did find the other day on Facebook, uh, it came up and said... Uh, your, you know how it comes up with your memories from the past. And from five years ago, there is a picture of an iPhone 4S where I had dug out and replaced this crystal by hand um, with a normal, like a Hakko uh, 900 series, um, what do you call it, soldering iron and a really cheap, nasty piece of hot air. No microscope, no nothing. And I... I think, I'm trying to remember why we did it. Um, I think it's a touch failure problem with these. The crystal, Something goes wrong with the crystal and the touch fails. And so you replace it. And I managed to do that completely without any of these tools that I have now. And it worked. I can't believe it. And I didn't fry anything somehow. And yet the p -mix right there. So it was a bit of pure luck. Yeah, the power management chips on these are not fun at all. I know I have done one and it sort of half fixed the problem, but then there were further problems down the road. And in the end, we just sort of went, no, nah, that's it. We're walking away from that. I cannot find... No, nope, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, well. Anyway, um, to finish up, really, I just wanted to put the multimeter onto a live test and see how quickly it would do its updates. 
and I gotta say I'm pretty damn impressed. I'm a little concerned about why it's um, why it doesn't obey the pardon me over one second sort of time delays. I know when I tested it before, it was doing it fine. Like I'd set it to five seconds, and it would take five seconds to do an update. So I don't know what's going on. Hey, Bobby Gordon. Yeah, zero things. Things are definitely much better. Uh, there was a rough couple of years. Uh, well, the last decade has been particularly stressful. Uh, turning hitting my mid thirties was not fun. Things just all went funny, and yeah, it was just the work I was doing for. I was doing commercial software development, like I actually ran my own business. Um, I had a product called um, Examime which was an email filtering system for uh, Linux servers. So you would put the filtering server between your, say, Exchange server and the gateway or whatever, and you know, you'd apply all sorts of rules and things like that. And that was actually very popular. I sold a lot of copies of that. Uh, places places like Virgin, like the airline Virgin, um, Australia National Bank, uh, Parmalat Foods. Yeah, a lot of places bought it, but the stress was just too much in the end and trying to keep everything up to date and also the environment which i was working in was always changing like i started out when it was just everyone was using sendmail and i created the sendmail rule zero hack that allowed us or allowed everybody to be able to filter emails bi-directionally prior to that we could only filter emails that were coming in you couldn't filter anything going out so after i came up with this um, rule zero hack uh, then everybody around the world could do this bi-directional filtering um, and then i sort of took it to a commercial product uh, then postfix came out which is really good postfix was actually much nicer than working with sendmail and i just sort of lost the uh that's the problem. I, I lost the interest in it, so to speak. It became a drudgery. And for most of you who are into all these sort of creative uh, ventures, you know that once it becomes a drudgery, it really is a soul killer. You're just like, I don't want to do that anymore. And, you, know, you just want to hand it off to someone else. So unfortunately, instead of handing it off to someone else, it sort of died a slow death. And uh, I sort of followed it along for a bit. Can I do app development? No, I don't do phone app developments. I am predominantly a um, C coder for Unix systems. Uh, I mostly deal with text or filtering type products. I don't deal with user interfaces very much at all. The last time I actively really worked for myself on user interfaces was back with uh, Ball and Pascal with the turbo vision text interface so like you had the 80 by 25 or 132 by 40 i think it was i can't remember it was at 62 either way um and ball and pascal had this brilliant turbo vision interface in text mode and you could do all your menuing your dialogues and everything it was just so easy after that delphi came out and windows took over and i sort of went back into the unix world um and it wasn't really until, well, pretty much until uh, Open Board View that I bothered to actively engage in a GUI user interface system. So, yeah, that's a, that would be about a 20 year gap. So, <laughs> anyway, can you build an ATM? It depends what an ATM is. There's many definitions, but are you presuming you're thinking a fake bank teller? Yeah, that'd be fun. Get people to put money in it. I like the one um, you see where it says uh, check the safety of your credit card and you get people to punch in all their credit card details and hit submit and it's like, <laughs> it's like oh no, no, no. And people do fall for that sadly. Uh, cues, yeah, I mean, mostly it's all a case of I'm doing stuff for myself. I, I write software to make my life easier and so long as I am not financially dependent on that software, say being proprietary, I've got no qualms in giving it out to the greater community. I mean, it it may not pay off now, but you never know what it might 
contribute later. Um, for me, my commercial income is from just doing all these uh, odd jobs of replacing screens, fixing computers, fixing electronics, you know, random things that come in. I even got someone's radio control toy came in the other day and they've broken, broken their transmitter on you know, refixing that. Ah, uh, Mr. Cryjo. My company workstation had to push wonderful Windows updates. Oh, gross. Yeah. I, that is most frustrating that whenever you need to do something quickly on Windows, it's usually when it sort of says doing updates or only offers you shut down an update or restart an update. And it's like, kill you. Ah, uh, well. Yeah, I better get moving. It's uh, almost two o'clock in the morning here. Like I said, I just wanted to come out and test this software. Uh, you have to see that it actually does what, what I wanted it to do. I should, uh, and it, it is, it's quick. It's, you know, it solves a problem that uh, Lewis was going on about. So he's probably not likely to watch this because it doesn't have MacBook or anything written on it. But um, I swear sometimes screen updates faster. Oh man, I'm just really happy of how fast that is. It just puts a smile on my face to know it worked. Yeah. Hey Rodrigo, unfortunately I'm jumping out now. My job role involves a lot of automation turning out, as in like automated row building things or just software or anything code can make easier for our team in managing a web hosting platform. Oh yeah. I'm glad I never got into that, like being an ISP or a hosting service or anything like that. Um, for a little while, I had a machine in the corner of the biz, uh, this massive uh, corporation that I was in, and I had 16 lines coming into the room, and I patched into them with modems and ran my own little uh, dial-in um, ISP. This was back in the like, mid-90s. Uh, it was a good money maker. And I had the blessing of the company because they weren't doing anything with the line, so everyone was happy. Anyway, I will uh, see you all later, and you will be able to see the software on my, if you go to my Git uh, page, which i tell you what, I'll, I'll copy that up. Where is my Git page? I need another text. You watch I'll crash the poor. Okay. Here we go. Just put this. I'll obviously put it into. Yeah, I'll do. Yeah, Tony Nash, I was talking about that a little bit earlier. I have a project in the pipeline for that. It's just taken a little while. You know, um, other things are taking priority. Unless someone wants to drop, you know, 150,000, 200,000 on me, I'll be happy then. When am I coming to Sydney? Never. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, okay, I'm out of here, and uh, you'll take care, and I'll see you next time.